So talk about the difference in like 08, 09. What is it like going into that playoffs again? That sort of, we only just got in on the last day, of course. What was it like knowing that you've gone for 07, 08? What was the difference? Well, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you a story about that, right? Is that we, ne we never nearly not got in mm. because we were playing, I think it was Burton at the time. Yeah. And yeah. Um, Wayne Carlisle was playing on the right-hand side of me. And him and John McGrath were going at it, <laughs> like going at it, like hammer and tong. And obviously, we, we had the result that we needed to go yeah. through. And uh, I just remember, it was literally just by the tunnel. And I was like, Wayne, I was just boom, absolutely skived him down. And he's, well, I think I've managed to get Wayne, I've pulled him away. So it's a free kick. And I, I'm saying to John, I said, listen, John, game's nearly done. We're in the playoffs. You guys are already up. Yeah, yeah. Just play it short. Just play it short. Let's just <laughs> and And Wayne, out of the show, he went, you won't put it in the mix, you shit bag. <laughs> I was like, Wayne, well, if they put this in the mix now and they score, this is on you. <laughs> John McGrath's only going to put it right in there. And as soon as, you know, so I'm in the ball with Wayno, and Wayno's still chirping at him and I'm going, you know when you just know you've already teed us up for failure, yeah? Because yeah. you can just sense yeah. it's going to happen. You're some big back, <laughs> just head in the back of the net, you're like, oh my God. Um, yeah, and he's he put it, now I think, I think big Robbo, it might have been Dingle, Mark Ellis, that ends up getting a header and, and heads it away. And I was like, and he blew up straight after. I was like, I said to Wayne, I, said, Wayne, I went, see, told you, shit bag. <laughs> <laughs> I was having kittens, yeah, kittens. But like, yeah, I remember Greasy pinging one in with his left foot. and, and Elliot, finish, yeah. yeah, yeah. Elliot, Elliot, finish. yeah. Elliot scored one as well. So like I said, Everything works out in the end, and but uh, God, I was panicking at that stage. Literally, the last, the last do you think that win? End. Do you think that win set you up for the playoffs? Um, beating the league champions, knowing that you were going to play Histon, um, who were at home, were a completely different force, but away from home, they were definitely. There's no beautiful. pressure on them, was there? That's what's with Histon. Yeah, they, all the uh, I think all the pressure was on us rather than them, even though they finished above us that season. Yeah, they were they were obviously the village team. Um, mm. done exceptionally well to get in there, so there, there there was no pressure on them. We were we were the ex football league team that failed in the playoffs the previous mm. year and uh, hadn't had a great end to the season. Um, but obviously, as you said, as you re as you said, we, we scraped in there. Um, yeah, I, th I think that the pressure was in us, but I think having them at home first helped us. Mm. Uh, obviously, Rowie scored, Silsy scored. Um, and then you like you, you felt safe. We should have got mm. more. We should yeah. have. There should have been. We yeah. should have been yeah. three or four up there quite easily. Um, unfortunately, we didn't. And then we ended up going back to, um, you know, go, going to there and we one of the longest there. games of football ever. Oh, oh. It, felt, it felt like the longest oh. game. Of football. I mean, and that save from Poke at the oh, end. Best save oh. I've seen. Yeah, oh my life! Unbelievable what save. Obviously, they went. They went one now. I think Toddy that fluffed the header. But I think. I think all of us as a back four then come mm. off the concussion because the ball was just <laughs> just launched into the box. Mm. Like it was very yeah. much similar to Lincoln. I remember playing yeah, yeah. Lincoln and mm -hmm. the yeah, air raid yeah, yeah. used to come out. Bloody siren, yeah. Yeah, yeah the air raid <laughs> siren. So, and that was it. Yeah. It was just a bombardment, wasn't it? And obviously, mm. you know, we get we get through there and we, you know, we're into the final. I remember Bucks then like basically lads, we fucked up last year. We're not, you know, mm. sitting here, mean business. Looks like we're going mm. We're going to the final. They're going to be watching us. Don't do anything. Uh, uh, mm. So I get back, watch the game on the telly and obviously Greaves is there, boob popping or whatever he was doing, <laughs> whatever he was doing at the time. Uh, and I was thinking, you crap. <laughs> and, but all of us are like stood there. Like, yeah. Like, I think that's when we won it. That's when we won yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. On the pitch. And yeah. then, we mentally won um, the playoffs yeah. that day. We, we mentally looked, won yeah. the playoffs yeah. there. Yeah. Do you that's remember their reaction as well? Do you yeah, remember how they reacted that day? They went crazy, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. They, they, they had champagne bottles. They were pinging champagne bottles yeah. up in the air. And, um, you know, that was Bucks's mindset. This yeah. is last year. We're not failing this year. Yeah. I think there's yeah. so much riding on for him. He yeah. spent a lot. He spent a lot of money as well. Yeah. To obviously get us where we needed to be. We were... It's probably top of the budgets, I would have yeah. imagined. Um, they gave him a good war chest, and he needed to produce a result. And you know, fortunately, Greasy scores a wonder goal with his right foot, trying to cross it, and then um, <laughs> you know, 
probably the best <laughs> cross I ever seen in oh, 20, well, 20, cross. 20, mm. 24 years of, of playing football. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean that's just unbelievable. And then Silsy's Silsy didn't have to do anything. He was just yeah. just put your noggin on it, and yeah. everything was done for him by a Wayne. Yeah, that, that 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 commentary is obviously so famous for Torquay fans from um, from Steve Bauer that day. But it's funny because I was a, I was about level with the penalty area. So and I remember when you listen to the commentary back, how I viewed it was how the commentary goes because I never saw him either. Because you're, mm. you're looking in the middle, think oh, he's in there. I think, oh, hang on, well, there's no point just pumping the ball in. Elliot's not going to get up and edit. And then all of a sudden, just from nowhere, he just appeared. But that final was really odd because having been obviously as a supporter, you go to you know you're full of nerves, and we've had playoff yeah. finals since and. I, I remember not being nervous. Like I went out with my dad and a few mates the night before. We went out a few beers, and but there was no. I wasn't nervous at all. And whether it was the reaction after the semi-final, but you just was like, yeah, we're going to win this. Yeah, we did. We did calm. a lot of things. I think it was good that we went to Wembley the previous year. Mm. Yeah, because we turned up into Wembley. We turned up to Wembley. Wasn't Marks, your big day out anymore? No, Marks and Spencer baggy suits with. You know, these, these great big roses on your thing. And you felt like you were in the FA Cup final. And Buck said, like, the lads, a couple of lads said, are we going in suits? And we had that season, Kenny had managed to get us two track suits. I don't know if you, I don't know if you remember or even noticed. We had a yeah. navy blue one for a home. <clears throat> and then we had a, um, a, a black one for away. Black one for the away, yeah. Black, and Bucks had said, right, take give all your tops to Kenny. Gave all our tops to Kenny. He had playoff final written on, like engraved on it. So it was still our own ones, mm. names on the back and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we've got given our tops back when in the track is. So it just, he yeah. just wanted it to feel like an overnighter. Yeah. The one with Stevenage, we went up three days beforehand, uh, yeah. Stevenage, sorry, um, against Ebsley. Yeah. So we trained at London Colony, Arsenal's training ground three for three days before that. Right. Um, you know, and that was something we never did. So he treated it like an overnighter. We went and stopped in the hotel the night before. And then, yeah, we were up and at them and it just treated it like another away game. And I think that's what helped us relax into it a little bit. Yeah, it, was, it, was a, it was a cagey game. It wasn't great. I think Breeze's goal obviously broke the deadlock, mm. um, which kind of relaxed us a lot more. And then we could play a little bit. But even then, it's, you know... What's it like soon. playing in a game like that? Is it kind of a bit out of body or do you just settle in? No, it's... First and foremost is Wembley, yeah, which is the pinnacle to, for any young aspiring football to to, to be at. Even if, yeah. like you, you're lucky to go and watch games of football, let alone yeah. play. Um, yeah, because I, I've been fortunate enough to play there three times. So, you know, just just to have that achievement in itself is just amazing for me. Mm. But you, you kind of you, you look at you walk out the tunnel and the noises. I said this in a, in a Rovers podcast. The noise is different. Yeah. Mm. At a normal ground, you can hear sound. I don't know if it's like for you guys, but... The stadium announcer sounds different. I don't know. I always pick that up. There's a Wembley because it's the echo round. It's something to do, isn't it? It's just yeah. something different. And you can't hear any anyone singing. And I think I think that game was, what, 40, 50,000, something like that, in the, the Edge League game. And it, it's just this, like, noise. It's, wow. it's really strange. Yeah. And it yeah. was... You could hear a little bit. You could hear Yellow Army because I don't. I think there was wasn't so many people in again mm. with the Cambridge games. So you could hear yeah. a little bit singing, but still, it's just it's just like this one noise, <laughs> and it's, yeah. it's just it's just so surreal. Like, and you look up and you think, Jesus, I'm actually playing at Wembley, yeah. yeah. Like, do you <laughs> know what I mean? It's, yeah, and you, but then you just the game kicks in and yeah. you, and you and you Channel get back. in. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I, I think your nerves do. I think your nerves your nerves do kick in at least ten times. You know, mm. higher than what a normal game would be because yeah. it's the sheer magnitude of it as well. Yeah, and obviously Cambridge they just lost it the year before as well. So that was um, yeah, and we still won that battle. So there we go. But yeah, I mean going into so go so we we had Alex Rowe and obviously he's he sort of when we got to football league he was like, all right, I'm kind of done here now he can't stand any left. What was it like, you know, getting into football league? Was it a little bit like a, almost like a gold medal depression thing? Or was it right, let's kick on now? Yeah, pretty much. I remember first day back in pre season and we'd had them crappy footballs, like mm. they were dog crap, the National League footballs. They're, <laughs> they're not much better now with new banners. And I just remember picking up this mitre and I was like <laughs> Thank God I get to play football with you again. <laughs> it was like, oh my God. Nico's like crying because he can't put bend and whip on him because he hits the ball so hard. And I was like, oh my God, a decent football, which feels good. Um, yeah, it was just that surreal. And I was like, 
that was the moment for me. I was like, yes, we're back in the we're yeah. back in the football league. That's a big thing for you as well. Bear in mind, yeah. obviously, yeah, it was like mm. yeah, the EFL footballs. We're playing with might of footballs. Mm. The badge is back on your arm, yeah. and it's it's everything that you, you you want and more, and it's it's what you work your your balls off as as a kid mm. to do because you want to play as high as what you possibly can. Um, listen, we had a gr- I think we had a great time in the blue square. Yeah, um, mm. I had a great time obviously with Rovers for the year that we were there, and it's it's a great league. And if you're doing really well on it, it, it gives you memories for a lifetime. But yeah. It's just Definitely. something about saying I'm a football league player. Yeah, it's just it's, it's just absolutely huge. And I just remember that first day, and they were blue and yellow footballs because they colour yeah. coded footballs. Yeah. Oh, they did that season, didn't they? Yeah, yeah you had home footballs, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, get in there. So I nicked a football as well. So I, still, I think I still got it upstairs in the loft. <laughs> <laughs> Is that when it felt real to you that the promotion had been achieved? You're back in the football league, was picking up those footballs. Was that the in your mind? Yes, it all feels real now. Yeah, obviously we're winning and you get you get your medals and you know what you're doing. But when you you get back into it, it's it's like silly things where you see the football, you've got the football there. You know, water bottles are turning up, the PFA turn up. Yeah. They give you a, they give you a three hundred and fifty pound boot voucher, or wow. the the boot skips are turning up. <laughs> your pension money then started back up again through the PFA. Okay, yeah. um, you know, so there's there's all these sh- these different caveats so, so to speak to you know why the football league is so important to players mm, yeah you know, these players that have played in the football league now are currently at Torquay mm. you know they won't be getting a pension money they won't be getting really? a good mm. um mm. you know they're effectively like a, a former member in in the union uh which is That's what they're still, they're still entitled to stuff but you don't get the perks of being so that hasn't league. really changed then that hasn't really changed today no no it's not right okay it's not. so it's, it's still is it so that's why i said that to be in and around that, um, to be in the football league, it's it's so it's so massive to a player because it, it, the benefits alone are just mm. you, know, you know. Yeah, no. Yeah. So those two seasons, especially, what what was it like? Because the first season it was well, it's a relegation battle, but we were there, and then to, but we grew and we grew in that running. But what was it like? Obviously, beating Chesterfield two 0 on the first day and. You know, some crazy games, wasn't it, that season? Yeah, so I think someone scored in that one. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought he scored it. I just, I didn't yeah, want to yeah. say it just in case Scott, I was... Um, Scott Rendell on his debut, wasn't it? Scored in that game, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Pr- a prolific header, I remember, from a yard out. Yeah. After, uh, <laughs> I think I nicked it off somewhere. But, uh, I actually popped my, I popped my groin that game. It Is was it? in the first half and I went to defend one at the back post and I got nudged in the back. And I just remember landing awkwardly in the turf and I kind of done the splits, but like in the... In the with both knees instead of mm. coming out. And I just remember it's a feeling a pop, got through the rest of it, and then I couldn't walk for like two or three days after that. And um, I just remember that that started the Damon Dave at the time, which is basically popping steroid injections in there just to get through it. I had that many, I think I had like 15 games with injections on just to get wow. through. And it started eating yeah. away at the muscle of the skin, <laughs> you know, inside of it. I was like, Damon, we might have to stop with these. Like, so, um, yeah, I, I, that... That whole season was just the season of, you know, Buck, Bucks had obviously signed Rens, which is a good signing. Mm. The younger lads in, like I said, the, the Danny Stevens, your, your Elliots, you know, Rowie, tied uh, Muzzy Carriol had obviously come in as well. Mm. That was kind of seasons for to to blood them in. And then, yeah. you know, all Bucks was worried about was just staying up. Yeah. That that was all that was on the on the on the cards. And then the big push after he had seen it, seen what he needs. Was the following year? Yeah. So we had we had some good games, went to some good places, and that. But you know, for the, the prime goal of that season was literally yeah. just to stay up. Yeah, that's interesting. And then obviously towards the end of that run, we went on that uh, clean sheet run towards the end of the Incredible. season, and then yeah. linked into the following season. Um, just that feeling at Grimsby was it Grimsby we won three 0 yeah. 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 three 0 at Grimsby kept yeah. us up. Um, just in terms of like the feeling in the dressing room at the time, going on that run, ending so well and then starting so well, did you think that season, at the start of that season, that promotion was definitely achievable for you? I think it was. I think the group had, what had been really good is the group had grouped together again. Yeah. Obviously, there was another change. So mm-hmm. you kind of had the old heads were now, Bucks was moving the old heads out. So yeah. Silsey was leaving, Greavesy was leaving. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, Wood, Woodsy had gone as well, so kind of those old guard Hodgie, I think, was yeah, you know, he, he was yeah. moved on as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think 
you know, it, so it, it kind of got left to, you know, the, the old experienced ones, even though we were old, was mm-hmm. myself and, and Kev. So mm-hmm. I can't remember who else was, was left with us at the time. I mean, Robbo had obviously come on board that first conference season, so he'd been there for three years. Both Bevan and Polk kind of been there yeah. for maybe nine, aren't they? So, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of, we were kind of like the, the mainstay, so to speak, mm-hmm. but still being in that young enough age bracket. Yeah to continue to go for the next two, three, four seasons. So, yeah, um, yeah, I, I definitely think what he did was the right the right thing. Mm. Um, but he was really lucky with the lads that he got in and kind of we had policed the change rooms then. Yeah. So they knew what the yeah. crap was with it. Yeah. We knew Bucks really then for two years. We knew what he would tolerate, what he wouldn't tolerate. Yeah. Uh, sorry, for three years. So it was quite easy to these the new lads mm. coming in to to get them to you know to get him into thinking of Buck's way of playing because mm-hmm. it, it was it was yeah. it was fast paced it was all action it was attacking never never rarely did we ever take a backward step to anyone we were always in your face yeah um, and it, and it was great and like you said that defensive run especially for us uh, I don't know if we still got the record for it or not but it's it, it was such a good achievement especially given the first le- first season back in the football yeah. league so I think the back four was myself well I think it was Pokey in goal wasn't it mm-hmm. myself um, Mark Ellis Brano and Nico so yeah. you know to, to do what we did was 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 brilliant was, yeah. was really good but it wasn't just us as a four like obviously Rowie had then yeah. you know, developed his game where he kind of had to take over from Greasy a little bit mm-hmm. um, yeah. whereas good you know, footballer Nicky Rowe good footballer yeah. Yeah, really good footballer. Could, he could play with the football. He was fantastic. He loved getting forward. He could pick a pass. Um, you know, if you were probably going to say if, if there was a critique of his game, it was probably his defensive side of it. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Very much the same as Unan. You'd give Unan okay in the football every time yeah. you could. And Ro- yeah. Rowie was exactly the same for us. You'd give him it and just, you know, you kind of knew and adapted your games to suit you know, players that are, players that were around you. Um, you know, I felt that when I when I ended up going and partnering Rowie in midfield, mm-hmm. I knew I knew Nicky was better on the ball with me. Mm-hmm. So, but I knew I was a better defensive player than what Nicky was. So you kind of dovetail your games around it, and, and you know, we we ended up having a good partnership. And then I think he fell out with Bucks at, at Swindon, and and uh, you tend to not fall out with Bucks because you'll end up. Um, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. When did you come captain again? And like, what was it like when you did come captain? Was it around that time? Yeah, so it was. Oh, it was after that Swindon game. I just remember. It did say on Wikipedia something to Nicky Rowe. I was like, well, I'm not going yeah, to go off it, Wikipedia. I was Rowie, trying to remember it. I, I don't know what it was. I think Rowe had Rowe had a tendency in in certain certain times where fifty fifties were there to be won, and when you're in yeah, the middle yeah. of that. Yeah, you've got to go in Bucks' teams. You've got to go, and he. Yeah. I think he kind of jumped out a little bit and. Bucks didn't like it. Bucks was, you know, that type of player where it was 50-50, but he could also play with the ball and he'd mix it. Mm. Uh, and he didn't like it. I think they kind of had a bit of a falling out. And, um, yeah, and then obviously pretty, he ended up moving on to Shrewsbury, I think it yeah. was, yeah. Uh, which ultimately, you know, we ended up playing in, in the, the playoff, summer off. Yeah, yeah, playoff semi. In the, yeah, in the playoff semis. And then, you know, that, and then the, the culmination of that then is obviously Union and, and Damon Lathrop, obviously, mm. they were just the young lads coming through, and they they become the midfield partnership. And um, yeah, we had, we had a good we had a good uh, end to that season. But it, yeah, it was just to have played for the club for I think it was it must have been five seasons. Mm. It's got to be less than that actually. For yeah, four and a bit four and a bit seasons to be given the honour of yeah. you know, to captain mm. in the club, and I, I'd done it a couple of times in the conference. Bucks had always think that mm. Breezy was injured then. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Woodsy was injured or he wasn't playing and some someone else would then take mm. over. I mean, mm. I captained against uh, Yeovil in the cup game. I okay, remember, yeah. I remember yeah, that. What game that was, yeah. BBC, yeah, the Danny Stevens oh. game. And Toddy. My what game. Uh, yeah, and it, obviously he, I'd had an experience of it as well, but it's, you know, I didn't envision, you know, what the role was actually was. Mm. I just thought it was an armband. What actually uh, is it? That? What difference yeah. is it? What you know, you're you're the leader of the team first mm. and foremost. Yeah. You're the um, when things are going wrong, you are the poster boy. You are the yeah. they are chucking darts at your head. You mm. are enemy public enemy number mm-hmm. one. Um, you know, you're the, the, the you're the liaise between the staff 
and the players, the staff and the the players and the board. Mm -hmm. You're the one that goes and does all the you know PGMO meetings with referees and things like that. And it's yeah, there's it's, it's a whole lot to it. You obviously entire to community. We didn't have a community officer down at Torquay at the time, so yeah. you're getting lads to you're getting requests to go and do school visits. Yeah, you're getting lads to listen. You need to go here. You need to go there. You end up becoming like a kind of a PA sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> go away from the football a little bit, and I'm like, got two kids at home as well. You know what I mean? <laughs> Don't need to be babysitting these lot and telling them where to go, giving them postcodes and and stuff. But uh, yeah, it, it certainly was. You know, for the for the for the time I was, for the duration as captain, it was such a proud moment for me and one. Yeah. Invariably, it didn't lead to to success. Um, we failed in the playoffs twice. And, you know, and, and then obviously we, I got, we got the relegation through that. So, mm -hmm. but, you know, it's such, a, such an amazing achievement just to be captain of a side. Um, yeah. Just to be that figurehead. And, you know, when you're sat in front of the, the team thing and, you, you know, you're there with the ball, you were... You, you kind of are the go-to person. And it was a great feeling because I'd always been that person where I was always Mr. 7 out of 10. So you kind mm. of, you did mm. what you had to do and, then, you know, I'd never let anyone down. But now it's kind of a big onus. It's time to step up to the plate. And I, I enjoyed yeah. every moment of it. That's great. Well, I'm conscious of time because we're very appreciative of time, but we've got, we've gone through a lot already. But let's just go through, obviously, 10-11, the playoff, you know, that still gets me to that day. Um but um, obviously, beating show has been incredible, incredible treat uh, game at Playmore 2 0. And what this whole Old Trafford stuff about, you know, the hotel ring <laughs> and you hear stuff like this and the pitch not being watered, obviously, we had it through Graham Wesley and all that. But mm. what was actually, is was that true? And what, what was actually like that day? I know there's going to be like questions about the whole buckle thing, but just from your point of view, like what was actually like that day, that sort of final? Uh, well, obviously, the hotel 100% yeah. happened. Yeah. Um, which didn't help. Yeah. Um, we get to bearing in mind every top stadium you go to, you will see the pitch being watered yeah. immaculately, like yeah. dripping to the sake of like there's puddles on the pitch. It's, there's that much yeah. water on there, and we turned up there and we did the warm up and it was bone dry. Not a, not an inkling of water whatsoever. And we thought it was strange. We we went back into the change room after the warm up. I said the bucks. I said the bucks. The pitch is dry here. Hmm. said like hopefully they'll put the sprinklers on and he said what do you mean the pitch is dry we were told it's going to be watered so we went out went out as as the start again they they must have drizzled a little bit of water on it because i know bucks went out and, and get some water on the pitch it would have dried out after five minutes yeah. so when i mean it was bone dry it suited them to a t yeah mm -hmm. so you can't tell me graham wesley has gone over there with mm -hmm. a brown paper bag and gave it the groundsman listen mm -hmm. you win by any way any means necessary yeah. They were never ever going to out football us. We were yeah. too good. We were too good at football side. What they would have done, and what they did do, was outpower us. Yeah, especially we never lost. We never lost to them at that point, have we? No, no. no. And I, mean, I, I look at the, and I remember, and I thought you would ask me this, and I remember at half time, and it was the only time I'd ever done it. I questioned Bucks and his selection mm -hmm. at, the, at the time for, it, and he just said, he said to us at half time, "Let's, you know, come on." Just get going. Let's keep moving the ball. Mm. I pulled, I pulled Northy, and I said, "Listen, I'm going to have a word with with the gaffer." I said, "You need to, you need to put me in the middle of midfield. Mm -hmm. Put as make us a three, yeah. because Messino and I can't remember the other lad, two six foot two absolute monsters. And yeah. what and as good as what Unan and Damo were physically, mm. they just couldn't compete. Yeah, I just think it just needed. I I, I needed to go in there and I needed to rattle a few cages." Mm -hmm. Could have took me out yeah. ten minutes afterwards and put me back into right back. Yeah, but just kind of, it was, it was kind of like an animo. They would break through. They were just too physically yeah. too big and too strong. Yeah. Where yeah. we couldn't move the ball, and Union couldn't get it out of his feet. They no. couldn't get it couldn't out. Couldn't free Union up. No, they no. they get caught. They get muscled off it, and then they were back driving at us again. And it was difficult. We, had, I mean, uh, Darius Charles was a thorn in our side at that day. He's, he's quick. Yeah. He's strong, and they they just went route one with everything and. We had half chances, but you know, if we, we just we just we just couldn't get yeah. going. Just couldn't get yeah. going because we couldn't we couldn't move a ball. You saw at Shrewsbury when when we played Shrewsbury at home and in mm. away, we absolutely battered oh, them. We battered them, yeah, absolutely battered them. And you know that was an unbelievable performance. And I, I guarantee, if that pitch was wet, would have been exactly the same. We would have boxed mm. them off the park. Been in League One, 
scored yeah. three goals and got in League One. I've always yeah. known that story was true because like, we stayed in Manchester that weekend and that evening we met Debs, Danny Stevens and Mark Ellis, like it was in a bar in Manchester and they were telling us that because oh, at the time we were watching it, you remember thinking, crikey, we're just not getting our game going here. We're no, not getting yes. the ball, we're not moving the ball, we're not moving them around. And actually, in, and they were just like, they, they, I remember their disappointment in their face was just like, yeah, we lost, but we didn't have, you know, not quite, we didn't have a chance, but the you know, the pitch for, you know, you usually go for a top level pitch and yeah, that's what you get. Traffic. I mean, I, I, I remember that season really fondly because I always had a goal. I wanted to go to every game home and away. And mm. I, allegedly I worked Saturdays at that time, but and I, I never, I had to miss the one game the year before because of a mate's um, engagement do. But that year I managed it and I went to all 49 games that season and it would have been brilliant to have tapped, you know, capped it off with a, you know, mm. with the win. But it was, it was amazing memories that season, that season yeah, though. Incredible. Amazing. Oh, yeah. Some of the victories oh, we had. Was it 3 0 win at Bradford and stuff like that? It was just, yeah. you know, amazing. Where was what the football club had been and has been since. Yeah. Um, was, going into, yeah, I want to go into the, um, obviously, Buckle at that time was being linked heavily with Bristol Rovers um, prior to the playoff final. Just want to get your views because we've had a couple of questions in from people on social media. Um, Jamie asked um, if you think the re well, you've highlighted the dry pitch, um, but was there a sense that there was common knowledge that Buckle was leaving and did that affect the way that you, uh, the team played on the day or is that just complete? Just, just... You're professionals, uh, yeah. I, I think we, we were professional enough to know mm. that obviously there was interest. He'd done a cracking job. Um, it, it was pretty crap the way it came out. I think it was on the day of the game, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, the, the day before, you know, it's, it's been a long time. And I've had too many concussions, so um, memory's <laughs> away. Yeah, yeah. memory is not used. To, yeah, memory is not what it used to be. But it was, you know, for us, it was just get the job done. And it was, it was exactly the same team that played against Rosebery. It was exactly the same way we were gonna, we were gonna go about our mm -hmm. business nullify their aerial threat, move the ball, move their big bodies around, open up one side, tack down the other. Um, pretty much the way we, we played that the whole nearly the whole of that season. Uh, and, and the way we were comfortable with it. And obviously we, we didn't it didn't quite go we didn't go to plan for us. And I just, you know, I stopped in London the night before the the, the actual after the game, stopped with sister in laws and I got a phone call the next morning from Bucks. Um and I said, listen, I want to know, like, are you going or not? And he said, I've just rang you up to say, like, I've, you know, I've accepted going to, to Bristol Rovers. Um, I was half expecting him to say, I want you to come with me. <laughs> 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 and uh, and I was like, everyone else, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. And, and I get why you did it. You you, you mm. think it in yeah, terms of, not. I understand it. Yeah, you think in terms of stature of the club as well. Um, yeah. With all due respect, Torquay only has a certain sure. shelf it will yeah. it will reach, um, yeah. and you're probably saying League One. Yeah, that's yeah. all we ever have. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Unless and that's what Leroy didn't do as well. Leroy didn't go when his stock was highest because he yeah. could have gone when he got promoted. Mm -hmm. He could have had a you know because his career didn't really kick on. Just a bit like similar to Bucks in that sense. But mm -hmm. what Bucks did that was good was he went when his stock was highest, didn't he? I don't blame Bucker for leaving, still. I don't no, really no, see no, no. not at all. Done it more than We'd done all do this it. time. We'd all yeah. do it in our careers, wouldn't we? We'd all yeah, we've more than done it. Um, were you under contract at the time? Because I think uh, uh, we're going into next season, or was it? Because I did Bevan leave on a free and players like that. I can't quite remember now. Bev, quite Bev left, left on a free. Yeah, um, I still had. I'd signed another deal, so I, right, okay. I, was, I had one year left in my deal. Mm -hmm. one, uh, one year left in my deal remaining. Um, I know, obviously, he then went and signed Craig Stanley, who obviously did yeah. really well for us online, yeah. uh, and then signed Matt Gill from Exeter, who, yeah. was, who started yeah. midfield. And obviously, you know, I was I, I wasn't miffed, so to say. I was mm. like, because I had a really, really good relationship yeah. working relationship with Bucks. I, I still do now. We we still speak, you know, mm. through WhatsApp and. Um, Instagram is probably his, his, his best one. I don't know if you follow him and he, mm. you see his beautiful houses and he's living the dream now, the fella. Um, but yeah, and like I say, we had, we had a really good working relationship and we did from from the get go. He was always he's always someone I can you know trust and rely yeah. on. His feedback yeah. it's been the same. Um, yeah, and it, like I don't begrudge him it because like I no, said, Torquay has a self life. Bristol yeah. Rovers, you know, with the, with the fan base they've got potentially could be a championship club. Yeah, definitely. Um, so to, to have that, and he just wanted to succeed. He wanted to hire managers as high as he possibly could. And, you know, him leaving 
you know, kind of kind of helped me a little bit then as well because obviously Martin came in and you know I had an absolutely unbelievable time with with, with Martin. What a season! Yeah. What a season that was! Yeah. Honestly, what a team! Going to speak about obviously because we all know what this unfortunate struggles afterwards, and I think the world's moved on, especially where you work with now. The world's moved on. We understand yeah. a lot more about it rather than in probably even though it's well, it's not that long ago, is it? But we've moved on a lot since then. But talk about how when he came in, what was it like? Obviously, to replace was he very much like right? This is how I'm going to do it now, or was it like kind of you know? Because right, the most famous example is Brian Clough going in at least, isn't it? When you've had Paul Buckle, he's been so popular, or was it like totally different? Um, <laughs> yeah, completely chalk and cheese. If you yeah. think yourself like the most one of the most relaxed men I yeah. think I've ever, ever met as a football manager. That, that was Lingy. Yeah. Um, obviously he got given the job and I thought I'd give it two days. I was thinking I'd, you know, I'm captain of the club here. Mm. Um, I'm expecting a phone call. And I thought I saw it. I'm just going in. So I went into play more, went by the manager's door and he was there. I knocked on it. I said, uh, I had three months for you. He said, I know, I know you are Lee. He said, I'm glad I was going to call you today. I'm glad you come in. So we sat down and first thing he said, he said, uh, you're not a right back. <laughs> I said, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I know that, but I was just doing a job. I was just doing a job for the team. And he said, you're going to play, for me, you're going to play back in midfield. I want you to get, I want you to, because obviously he'd, he'd followed, hmm. as, as any good manager does, you, you know players up yeah. and down the country and what they're good at and what they're not good at. And he said, listen, you're, you're a box-to-box midfielder that can score goals and we need to go back into that. And uh, I want you to do it. And I said to him, listen, obviously you're new. You're going to bring your own players in. Do you want me to continue being captain? He said, yeah, not um, 100%. He said, but I'm going to change it a little bit. Um, you'll be the team captain. And I said, well, it kind of feels like a little bit of a demotion. He said, no, you're just concentrating on the team. What I want you to do, because obviously he'd spoken to members of staff yeah. and said, Man's doing the community stuff. He's getting lads here, there and everywhere. He's doing visits himself. Mm. He's speaking to referees. He then brought Brian Sarr in. And Brian Sarr was then the club captain. Right, so okay. he was the designated one that would do, get the lads to the, you know, the visits and all that mm. sort of stuff. So he, that, that was his role. Um, which kind of, which was brilliant because it's really interesting. Kind of, that, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I took it, it kind of took a caravan off me, you know, mm. with that added responsibility. I could pass it over to someone else to do. And um, yeah, ever since, you know, the start of pre-season, we went over to, God, it must have been, I think it was Look, Plymouth. Oh, yeah, we, was it, yeah. We went, we went to Plymouth and did the SAS camp or wherever. Oh, was it? Yeah, I remember, oh, yeah, 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 I remember yeah, seeing. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. I, I was either Plymouth or Portugal, but I think I got a bit far off there. I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very, like, very similar like, places, one. Yeah, 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 I'd love to have gone to Portugal, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we did a couple of days there, and everyone come back, and it just just felt very much similar to when Bucks first took first took over. Nice. That it was kind of like a big new, fresh start, new beginnings. You know, you saw the difference probably in myself and Nico where mm. I, w- I wouldn't say we kind of needed that extra release sort of thing. We needed the fresh ideas to come in because we'd obviously we played under the Bucks for, for nearly four years. Yeah. And, you know, we were so in tune to how we wanted to play. So it was nice to learn something a little bit different. As yeah. Well. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was, like I said, it was a shaky start again, but the f- the following end of the season Incredible. was just what, what yeah, was because so, those those two mo- those three moments we'll talk about the season. Obviously, you scored in the first game again, that didn't you? Was he scored against Burton on that one? I can't remember when we come back for two 0 down. Was it you? Can't yeah, then, then we had me yeah, and yeah, the, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah and then yeah. we scored against Southampton as well. I was at that game. What the day yeah. that was? Yeah, and yeah. then I want to talk about. I want to, yeah, I want to talk about Bristol Rovers away. What was that like? When you were <laughs> <on>? <laughs> it was so early in the season as well, wasn't yeah, it? You couldn't have made it up. That was our first away game. Yeah. Um, and obviously it had been bigged up. And the thing that makes it even better is that it was built on I remember Mark yeah. Clemmer. So yeah. it was built as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was all behind it. Yeah. And Bucks turned up late for the game. But he was so blase, it was like we got to talk here, we're gonna roll him over. And I knew as soon as I walked in and it's on the camera, Clem goes, All right, what's the score gonna be? I said, We're gonna smash him. And I just deadpan and just walked straight into the thing. And uh, and at that time he'd signed Zeb. Zeb's was playing for yeah. for yeah. Rogers as well at the time. Never Zeb... got kicked that game. Okay. No, <laughs> no, no, Zeb... Zeb... Yeah. as well. Yeah. He sky, yeah. sky one towards the end, didn't he? Yeah, Zeb, yeah. Zeb's come out and um, you know he, 
he went to he went to shook my hand, and as he shook it, I just held it. I said, "I'm going to nail you today." And he started. He <laughs> thought I was just joking and laughing with him. I said, "I'm going to nail you today." But he just kept squeezing his hand while we were in the tunnel, and he said, and he kept going, "Are you all right?" I went, "No, I'm not all right. I'm not all right." And I just, I just mentally, I was just gone with it. But I think if it, it might be different, but the, the sense me and Nick I had was like, "Okay, Bucks, you could like you've assembled, like, you've brought in 16 players, like." We were your yeah. mainstays doing the tour yeah. of right? You could have, so it made it so sweet, and the manner in which we did it as well, mm. and the way we played was just mm. brilliant. Was yeah. just absolutely. Exactly a, that day. I think there's a good picture I've got printed out and, and put in my um, in my scrapbook of me and Nico just together, and we were just, and it just it just felt brilliant. It was yeah. just worth it, and the, the the crowd. I've never had an yeah. energy like that. As an from an away game is mm. what that was because I think it was, was kind of like yeah. bucks had buggered off to, to yeah. rovers up the road. Yeah. And, you know, we've yeah. done this. New oh, it hurt at the time. It hurt yeah. at the time. Yeah, we, yeah. It, we, we it was all full of we were all full of pain and rage, weren't we that day? I remember not that. now, Brilliant. but we yeah. were at the time. Yeah, no, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Um, because we had yeah. I think we won out shot then, but then as you say, it was a bit of a wobbly start. And I always remember Lane came out and said the answers are within the building or something like that. He came out and said, yeah. that. Yeah. "What was that like as a player?" It gave. It, he was like that from the mm. very start. He said, "I've assembled, a, I've assembled a squad that I think can challenge this year." Yeah, and it took us a little bit to get going. And you need to find your right partnerships in in yeah. any squad. You need to find your right partnership. That started that season. Excuse me, myself and Unum were a midfield pair. Yeah. Now the way Martin wanted to play, I think we were playing a four four two. Ian Morris was on the left hand side, yeah. um, or no, on the right hand side. Sorry, inverted, and then. Yeah. Billy Bowden was on the left-hand side and he was just a mercurial talent then, Bill. Mm. And it was just... It, it just needed to click. And it wasn't clicking. That 4 4 2 wasn't clicking. Obviously, mm. we, got, we had good players, a good spine through the team. But the addition of Damo coming in... Yeah. Just well, allowed me like, and Newton... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just allowed me and Newton to, to do what came naturally to us. Mm. It allowed me to get all over the place and yeah. break things mm. up and... Be a pain in the ass. It allowed Yunan to find pockets of space, which he was unbelievable at doing, using his mm. range of passing, his vision, you know, his, his touch, his technique was just class. It was just Damo was such an important cog. How you know we got the plaudits for all four of us of being in team mm. of the year. And I was really fortunate enough to get player yeah. of the year. But my my players player vote went to Damo. Yeah, because it's without, amazing. It, yeah, yeah, without the addition of Damo, we I don't think we would have achieved. I know we didn't set out and we didn't accomplish mm. what we wanted to because we ran out of legs in the end. But, yeah. Yeah. you know, the addition of Damo was just massive for us. You say that was career ended, but it shows yeah. he's, what was it, first team coach at Watford now? Yeah, first team yeah, assistant lovely. manager at Watford, Love that. Which, yeah. Yeah, which is yeah. brilliant for him. Um, and like, you know, the, the squad that he'd got in and he assembled was just, you know, it was another one of those where it was kind Unless of a fresh start. What I can yeah. do, or you know, yeah, just... Bobby, Bob, yeah, Bobby would just would just save anything, and he was just a great guy. There was more good guys in the building than what there mm. were assholes, and if yeah. they were assholes, they were just shoved off to the side. You couldn't yeah. afford to be an asshole in that group. Mm. We all got on together. We all lived in the same area together. Yeah, we all went out together. All right, I didn't go out as much as mm. you know, the younger lads. Mm. You know, I was you know married man with with two kids then, but I had an occasional night out with them. And they were just, it was just brilliant. They, yeah. they were just, just a really good group of lads that wanted to succeed together. And that was, it was so similar to that, you know, first two years on the Bucks. Yeah, no, it was so, so many great, amazing results. Yeah. I'm not like, going to say something. Uh, I was going to say, um, in terms of Buckle and Lingy, did you have a pre? Did, who did you uh, playing under more? Oh, I got the best out of you. Uh, it was difficult. It, the, the chalk and cheese, really. Mm. I need. I needed. I needed Bucks to give me stability, and I needed yeah. him to fire a rocket up my ass. Otherwise, I wasn't gonna. You know, I was mm. gonna probably peter out of the game. And he did that, and he gave me the opportunity to, you know, to to make a name for myself. And then Martin gave me the license to do what I'd always done as a kid. Mm. Um, and for that for that year, I felt personally, I ju I just felt, you know. Unreachable. I, di I didn't think anyone mm. in the league. Well, you know, it might be arrogant of me saying, and I, and I don't really like doing it. But I it's didn't think there was. A, I didn't think there was a midfielder that could do what mm. I was doing in League Two. Yeah, yeah. that's Breaking true, stuff. though. 
It speaks volumes. Yeah, no. True that year. Yeah, it was absolutely. ridiculous. Yeah. Was that the se- Sorry, Lee, was that the season where you um, had the bet with Nico? Yeah, and then obviously Helen had come down in Soccer AM and cleaned the house up, and um, he was supposed to clean our house naked, and he had a penny on. And worst <laughs> thing is, that actual bet cost me money because. The message like Helen had Helen had messaged like rang up and just said, Listen, we're coming down, we're gonna film this, like it's gonna be a brilliant segment, are you all right with this? Check with Martin, he was pissing himself laughing. He said, Yeah, I can't wait to see it, sort of thing. My missus went to next in the willows, right? And redecorated the whole of our living room. <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not. There was at our living room was sponsored by Next. There was a coffee table turn up. There was a rug. <laughs> our, our house had never looked so immaculate. Bearing in mind, we've got two kids. She must have cleaned it for two days. Like, and it, she like, we were just at it. She was like, put these curtains up. By Saturday, I was absolutely cream crackered. <laughs> I'll buy it then everywhere. And, were, uh, yeah. were you surprised how quickly that all blew up? Because obviously, with the early goals that you scored, Soccer AM, Helen Chamberlain, it got a lot of uh, public exposure. Um, yeah, just especially once the bet was settled and you did have Nico around. I mean, my mum asked whether you can come and do our housework as a pair uh, <laughs> if you're in the market for it. I'd be full on if I didn't mention that. But um, I guess, again, it just comes down to the unity that you've yeah. that, that have been at this football club, especially in that era. Um, just the togetherness that, you know, you can laugh something off like that and still yeah. be focused and bring success to the football club. I think that, I think that was the environment. And the Bucks, it was can win at all costs by yeah. the size we win we win yeah. everything win the running but you've got to come in first mm. whereas Martin we, we hardly did anything tactical mm. honestly our, our training was three team games sounds like Martin t- O'Neill's like sort yeah, of we, what I you mean, hear with teams we would, yeah. t- we would touch on um, we would touch on some set pieces and it was kind of he'd formulate the game plan on the Saturday he'd tell us in the meeting then we are off I love watching to... Talkie that year so yeah. much. It's and such a just, shame with yeah. Martin. I thought he's such a good manager and great bloke for the football Fan- club. Yeah, fantastic. Bloke. We've got we've got to talk about um, the crew at home. Well, this is probably actually the most painful oh. football games I've ever been to because if we're one that bloody I'm, Nick I, Powell, I don't. Yeah. yeah, I still I hate it. When as soon as we got yeah. to move to my United, it's, honestly, I oh. but. Um, I still, even though Rennie's hell's near gone, I still think we would have won at Hereford if we had beat Crew and all that stuff. But I mean, yeah, um, there's no doubt for the football club. But like that was horrendous. I mean, conceding that goal and then having that goal ruled out for no reason. Having it. Yeah, yeah. I think you need a bit of counselling with that, Sam. Yeah, I do. There's, there's definitely do. some. It's uh, that, and then Ashton Gay. Ashton Gay. Definitely, oh, yeah, yeah. definitely some anger vented there. That's yeah. not a problem. Like, but yeah, that was an absolute kicking the nuts out to be yeah. honest with you I mean we'd, we'd done so well you know from probably Christmas onward with the with the run that we'd gone on I mean we were absolutely flying flying even if we were having a little bit of an off day which was quite rare we would still pick up a win or we'll pick up something that was positive and yeah. it was just it was just the environment that was created by Martin and you know the, the pen obviously went you know, uh, I think it was Bev's, wasn't it? In goal, at the, was it Bev's in goal or Pokey? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. When he, when he saves the pen, and obviously the, then they get the equaliser, and you just think, you absolute buggers. Yeah, um, yeah. No, then, I remember. Yeah, I forgot that. Legend said the penalty, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. It was. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Bobby, it was Bobby. I don't know. If I said Pokey for Bev's. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, Bob says because I remember Harry Davis was the penalty taker, and it was Steve yeah. Davis was the manager. Yeah. And we had a bit of a set to afterwards because as he's taken up the penalty, I went up to Bob and I was just pretending to waffle crap at him. Mm. And as I went, as I walked back to the penalty spot, he'd obviously placed it. I went and kicked the ball off the um, off the thing, off the spot. And then as the ball was off the spot, I started ticking up the um, you know the penalty spot. And he's come over, got in my face, and obviously I'm effing and blinding at him and all that sort of stuff you're going to fucking miss and uh, you know, mm. piece of shit that sort of thing you're only playing because your dad's managing the team and all that <laughs> just trying to get into his head because we're, we're one nil up yeah. we're one nil up and just, yeah we're one nil up we're just thinking listen we need to win this we win this there's a big gap and we'll go and do Hereford that's not a problem and yeah and then obviously when Bobby says it brilliant and then in the very last minute when obviously he gets it and uh, when he gets the equaliser, it kind of felt like an Exeter moment. Yeah, really. it was. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's where that's where we just ran out of energy. We could just yeah. 
yeah, we couldn't yeah. big, we couldn't pump and the disallow in. goal as well. Yeah, still reckon, it? I remember yeah. their keeper. He turned around. I was in the family stand, and he proper like given it like shh and all that after. I think it was like Steve Phillips. You talk about yeah. counselling. Well, I had him as goalkeeper coach on football manager, and I sacked him. And I got a new job once, so I don't think I actually ever did get over him. To be honest, so yeah. I've got my own back so, virtually. Sam lives out his whole life on football manager. Yeah, I do. Manager, he, thinks yeah. he can't. He can't. He can't contribute to you in real life. So no, it works really well. It's only because talking is so bad in real life. I have to do it virtually. But um, <laughs> I hope for that will change again soon. We'll be back to the good old days. But yeah, and obviously that game at Hereford. I'll make you all feel old again. That was my thirteenth birthday. We were yeah, that one. Mm. Stank of pee, yeah. and then we were three 0 down within twenty whatever forty minutes. But you could tell Rennie Al's injury, the crew game, it just killed it, hadn't it? Yeah, I think yeah, I'd, I'd race I'd, I'd race had been run by then. I think yeah. the the biggest one was the crew because we played a lot of games that year. You know, there wasn't hardly any changes to the starting team or all the squad. Mm. Um, and kind of we were that back end. We were kind of going. There wasn't much depth, was there? In that squad, there, there wasn't much depth. No, and like I said, the, the crew one kind of takes all the energy out yeah. of you. It's like very yeah. much similar to the extra bit. But yeah. if we were to beat crew, your endorphins are back up. Yeah, you're ready to go out Hereford because you know the big prizes mm. on the line. Beat, and beat they've got to win to stay up as well. Why would yeah, you have to stay up? They're gonna be nervous. Yeah, beat, beat these and, and we're there and. I just I remember three 0 down and we'd had a goal match. I think we got it ended up three two, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I just remember reaching for reaching for one up the. It was kind of up the slope. The Torquay fans on the right hand side, and mm. I got pulled back, and it was a blatant pen, and it was yeah. Roger East, the, the buffoon. He was yeah, he was the referee. Yeah. I always remember that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was by it was Byron Anthony who pulled me back. So I'm like in pen, which would have made it three three. Yeah. Um. And anyway, I'm having a set two with Byron Moore. There's a picture that I've gotten by the scruff of the neck. And it was just, I, kind of, I knew then, I was thinking, we're, we're, we're done here. But the only, the, only, the only way we had a chance of it was kind of we needed the good energy that week to really pump us up. Yeah, even if you got a three or not gone yeah. up, maybe that three or would have taken you into the Cheltenham playoffs a bit. Yeah, three or down, that gives yeah. you a good momentum then to go yeah. in. But to be three, two... And obviously, like you said, Ren had got injured as well, um, which was which was massive. And we didn't perform in the you know in the Cheltenham playoff games. Yeah. And you know, Packy he, he scores that absolute ludicrous free kick at, yeah, at playing yeah. more. And they keep had a great game as well, Scott Brown, I think. From what yeah, I yeah, yeah. And even in that one, he's, I had an overhead kick and he saves it from point black range. Mm. It's just like, yeah. you know, like. You're kind of getting the thing. We're having chance after chance after chance, mm. and we're just, you know, they're riding their luck. Obviously, they yeah. take me in from the the first leg up, and yeah, it just it just wouldn't go in for whatever whether or not we lo- we lost luck or we just ran out of legs. You know, you don't know. But I say, and, and sadly, we always say that was kind of the beginning of the end a bit for the football club. Now, obviously, it's a very difficult season, wasn't it? What happens next with Ozzy Martin? We we won't expect you to go in it at all because obviously you know a lot more. When we did at the time, but like, what was it like as a player? Because we had its moments, you know, we're just being Exeter away and, you know, we're mid table comfortably. What was it like that season? Yeah, so it was when Martin's troubles first started. I, I'd noticed probably two or three games before that. Because I mean, like I said, very rarely have I ever fallen out or had an argument with the manager. You'd have like, you'd have yeah. pick some stuff. Out. And I, I remember again, we played a game at home. And it might have been Harrogate in the FA. Oh yeah, that was a bit of a killer. That yeah. one, it. Yeah, yeah. They had one opportunity scored. We had sixty-five. Yeah, and old Thompson, bless him, missed yeah. that chance. And he was really promising at the time. And I feel like he never recovered yeah. after that open goal. His sort of career for us. I just, yeah, yeah. And that was the, obviously. And I remember half time, and um, Craig Taylor had come up to me, who was assistant manager, and he was like, "Man, you need to be that." And I was so angry about us conceding the goal. Mm. I, I kind of turned around the tails and said, I know what the fuck and there yeah. was the matter with me. Like, just give me five minutes yeah. in the shower. Because I used to take myself away. Yeah. Just to, you know, because your emotions can get you. Yeah. So I used to go in and have a breather. Experience told me to go and have a breather. And I just remember Martin coming in. Like, I've just, just told tails, and I shouldn't have done it, told tails mm. to basically piss off and leave me alone mm. for five minutes. And Martin just come in. How dare you speak to them? And we're having a set two in now. Just, just give me five minutes. I just need to calm down. That was crap. Mm. Like, I wish it was said in that way, but it yeah. wasn't. It was yeah. quite. It was quite yeah. fiery. You know, Monday, like he's saying to me, you know, 
you know, you should have kept the ball better or you, sh you should have made this tackle, you should have made mm. that run. And I'm like, I can't do it if I haven't got the ball type of thing. Um, yeah. And it, it was kind of like that frustration. That was the first time I'd ever seen him kind of that way. Uh, and I thought to myself, I've never seen him like that. Yeah. Because obviously, we, we'd have arguments with Tails. Tails yeah. was quite combative, yeah. combative. Although he was just a gentle giant and he was a brilliant human being. Yeah. He could also stand and have a row with you if you needed to have a row. He'd call you a yeah. bonker if you were a bonker. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it was. So that was the first time. And then I remember turning up to Exeter, and Tails had pulled me and just said, "Listen, the gaffer's not coming. He's unwell." No. Uh, we go then and go and have a fantastic result there. We win. Yeah. And, and Thursday comes around, and you know, training gaffer's not in. Mm. Uh, and then Tails had said, "Listen, the gaffer's not in. That gaffer's not well. He's, you know, we're not going to see him for." Uh, you know, a couple, you know, it's probably going to take a couple of weeks off. And I was like, right, okay. Um, told all the rest of the lads that Gaff was not well. Um, I, I said, I sent him a message to say, listen, I'll be feeling better. Can't wait to see you in a couple of weeks. We'll yeah. make sure we're up and around it when you're back. And yeah, we, we, we uh, unfortunately didn't see him again um, down, down at Playmore. And uh, which was just absolutely horrible because he's mm. just such a we we didn't realise at the time no he was going yeah. through he was even going through it in the season where we were you know mm. being really yeah. successful but that's yeah. what happens when you're so far away from your family members yeah moved down he was by himself yeah his wife and obviously young Sam and his and his um yeah and his daughter were still in Essex and that's yeah. in the way and it was just yeah and it just had a you know a seismic effect on him. It's really sad because, as you said, such a great manager and it's such a shame. Uh, again, I suppose we're a lot more aware now, but at the time, you know, that it's really tough and we all have our opinions on it. But as fans, we don't feel obviously it was handled well, what happened at the end of the season. But, I mean, that's for another day, I guess. But uh, it's just a bit of a difficult one really when you don't really know what's going on. Because from the fans, we're like, well, what's going on? We we didn't know anything. So, yeah. Um, and I imagine from the players' point of view. So, obviously, Alan Neal comes in. What is it like having a manager come in uh, at that point, when you're just like, oh, what's up to Martin and all that stuff? Yeah, it, it was kind of um, we all we all expected Tails to get it. To be honest with you, I'm yeah, till the end of the season. And I guess that was a plan, but he had a bit of a bad run. Where I thought we were playing yeah. well, but we just were losing games just one weren't pick, We weren't picking up results, and then yeah. um, and we thought Robbie was going to go in and, and be his assistant till the end of the season, which probably would have, you know. We would have probably ended up mid table because we would have just done the same things that mm. you know we'd done week in and week out uh, under Martin. But obviously the the whole change of it happened. Yeah, Brassy yeah. come in as an assistant as well, and then the kind of the, the dynamic, and we limped to a finish uh, and, and staying up because we just went. Poof, yeah, break. it's so hard when the club that drops on mid table. It's so hard to reverse that, really, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, um, a great day against Bristol Rovers, mind you. That was a great day, but um... yeah. But that, yeah. like, it was one. It was just what Yeah, it was just one of those where you kind of you kind of know what's going on. You mm. we we've, we've gone from games where we were, we were thinking we're going to be in it, we're going to win a game yeah. to yeah. Okay, and then we were getting beat by now. And it yeah. wasn't anything. It wasn't anything to do with to do with Nilly or anything like that. Mm. It was just how the club had just changed come from yeah. obviously from Martin to then this new regime and I and I think the supporters had a lot to play in that because mm. of the way that Martin was treated yeah it kind of manifested itself into the start of that and I I stand here now and I say it and I say it to people's faces I don't think the recruitment was was right under no. um were under Alan and not at all Call recruitment at Talkie United. No, no, no. Seen that. <laughs> no. I, from, from a fan's point of view it was what was it it was just two year deals for players from a long way away and players are near the end of their career. I mean, we didn't even have, we assigned two strikers a week before the season, didn't we? Yeah. I That's think mental. Balls come in and then um, Damien Mazika come in as well. Yeah. Uh, oh, Tungi, yeah. Tungi had come in. Tunga Tungi was a good lad, to be fair. Mm. But, um, yeah, it's just, it, it, it was, there were signings and then, and there was, you know, there was, there was players there. And like what I said to you earlier on, I had always, and I still, you know, wherever you go to work, that is your place of work. Yeah. Torquay has a, you know, a unique lifestyle mm. where yeah. you're surrounded by beautiful beaches. Yeah. It was half decent nightlife there. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, you're there to work and be a professional yeah. footballer, yeah. not be a professional yeah. party animal. Yeah. What we what we had then in that group was professional party animals who yeah. love to 
win, lose or draw, we're out on a Saturday it's night. Yeah. yeah, we're chasing skirt on a Saturday night, which for me, you know, I could have as many team meetings as, and, and I'd said it as blue until I was blue in the face, and I'd have so many rows mm. about it. Myself and Kev, we've been there for a long time now. We look, we were looking at what six years, probably yeah, six, six no, seven years. We would have been mm. it's the seventh season, mm. my seventh, and Kev's sixth. So we knew what the situation was with it, yeah, and how we should act, how you should act. Yeah. when to go out when to not to go out to do the right things and unfortunately the the group you can only lead a, a horse to water but you can't make them drink and yeah unfortunately so would you, would you pinpoint moment. the recruitment then as being the reason why the season went wrong for us in 2013 and just like the personalities probably coming in as well i th- yeah i think that i think there was a care aspect to it um mm. I think there was a lot of things, a multiple of things, to be honest with you. I think mm-hmm. the Martin thing, the Martin thing wasn't great. The board didn't mm-hmm. do a good job with that one. No. Um, but then also, you know, the the recruitment. You're only as good as the players that you get in, and unfortunately, yeah. the Athletes yeah. squad. And then we resembled a squad that, you know, it probably looked from the sidelines, and especially for me, felt like we're playing as an individuals and not as a team. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and that's kind of manifested in, in, in what happened that season. What was it like having Argrees come in as a manager? I, th- I thought it was a bit of a Hail Mary punt, to be yeah. perfect, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, we're only, we're only waiting for myself and Silsey to take over the job, and then you'd have had the, all four of us then. So, uh, <laughs> with, with Nico, uh, it, listen, it's he obviously interviewed well. Because um, Ling, didn't Ling go for it? I remember Ling on the radio saying he'd gone for it. Martin Ling had gone for that job. Yeah, and I, and I think, sure. yeah, and I, I think obviously with what was going on, a lot mm. of people stayed clear of Martin because they didn't want him to happen mm. again to him. Mm. Um, but yeah, Greavesy got it and it did feel a little bit weird because you go from, you, you know, your teammate who probably had been let go probably two and a half years before that. He was, although he was still living in Exeter, he was then working at Bournemouth um, mm. Academy Academy um, Academy yeah. coach. It's a big job to go into. Bottom yeah. of League Two relegation battle with a squad that, and well, I wouldn't say underachieved because you got to achieve something to <laughs> use that underachieving <laughs> underachieving kind of thing. Um, yeah, and I, I just felt, I think, it, yeah, that was, I mean. I was getting pe- I was getting pelters as well. I think that that mm, didn't. That must have been tough. Must have been I tough. was getting, you know, where we were in the table. I was I was public enemy number one. It was like I said, it's brilliant when everything's going really well and you've got the mm. armband on and you take the plaudits. And I've never been one to stand there and go, "Fucking hell, I'm great," and all that. Yeah. To take the rough with this move. I've always been, I mm. pride myself on being quite level headed with that. I don't like singing my own praises, but it did get tough. Yeah. At the the end of the end of my time at Torquay was probably, and that was probably the catalyst for me to leave. Of course, yeah, um, yeah. And it, it, I mean, there, there was stuff being wrote about my wife on you know forums and stuff. Horrendous. Yeah. Um, you know, I remember reading one tweet where someone had put on they wanted us to go to um the the Swiss camp for death, I think it was, wherever it was, and you know, you kind of. So horrendous. So that's now a part of like professional football. Yeah, yeah. It's I, horrendous. I it is. And it is, uh, you know, I was I was chasing my game as well, which was the which was the most horrible mm. thing because I knew where we were heading, and you could ask Kev probably he'll probably say the same thing because we've been there, we love the club so much. Yeah, and no, I can never a, understand that. Such yeah. a such a huge important time of our lives. Um, and listen. People will always have opinions on you mm-hmm. as a footballer. It's, you know, you pay your hard-earned money, you can have opinions. You think I'm great, brilliant. If you think I'm shit, brilliant. Mm-hmm. That's, you know, it's, that's everyone's opportunity to, to, to voice their opinions. And I'll never stand in anyone, you know, stand in anyone's way of voicing their opinions. It, it is what it is. But some of that stuff I felt was unaimed, was aimed at myself you know, and Kev, because we were the ones that were there the longest. I just don't get that. I just don't, I don't get any kind of abuse at all. I never will. But let alone players, you know, clearly, no, this is not even yeah, why. The ones that you can see care the most, get the most stick. Yeah, I remember you yeah, walking off after silly. the Dagenham game when we were virtually relegated and seeing how much it meant to you then. And it was just like, oh, it's horrible. Just after everything we've gone through. And I, we, we always remember how you do as well, obviously, the, the great times. But to end it like that must have been horrible. 
yeah, it, it wasn't great. And it's, like I said, I, I was arguing with supporters. I was, you know, mm. I remember one game, I think I scored in it. I might have scored in it. And I remember at the game, I think we lost 2-1 or 3-1, I think it was. And I just remember, as we, I'd always made a thing of going around and, and you know, clapping supporters. Mm. And I just remember that it was just, as I was walking around the pop side, I just remember some fella just pointing. Big... Big rotund fellow was just pointing at me and just calling me every name under the sun, and uh, that was it. And that was just the catalyst for me. I just switched and I, I offered him out, and it was not one of the proudest things I ever done. But I just got to a point, and like I said, I was chasing my game. I was trying to make yeah. up for downfalls with people because they weren't yeah. working hard. No. The, the, the no. gimme you get in a football game is you give hundred percent, whether you're talented or not. It doesn't yeah. matter. I felt that we had players that didn't put everything into it, didn't okay. give well, what... We, we saw that watching yeah. it, yeah. Didn't was, give yeah, what yeah. me and Kev, and we would then, instead of doing a job and a half, which is what you'd normally do in a successful side, we felt we were doing a job in three, yeah. or maybe sometimes yeah. even four. So it neglected me yeah. from doing my role, which when they, which enabled me to then, you know, I, I ultimately I was I was useless. Well, what it's like I... any workplace. As soon as if you're like working three or four jobs, you then don't do your role, and then it gets stretched, and then you leave. That's just how yeah. it goes in any and, workplace. And, that's, and yeah, and I think that was that was the most devastating part because I'm trying. We were trying every sinew to get yeah. to stay up because we yeah. didn't want to get relegated again. And then you know the inevitable happens, and you just think like you, you're giving everything. You have so, like you said two years ago, we were on the verge of getting into the playoffs and going into League One. Yeah. Now we're relegated into the National League. And yeah. it's just, you know, it's, it's true. Like I say, I keep going back to it. The, the, the feeling was just, you know, just absolute sheer devastation. Yeah, so many highs and lows in your spell, really. And that, that's right. a, that's a tough thing. I mean, but, oh, yeah, I mean, at the end of it, obviously the Bristol Rovers move. Um, are you to do anything else on that? But the Bristol Rovers move, and obviously that ended brilliantly. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was yes. a, it's nice for you to have that, definitely. I think it was the the right move at the right time because, yeah. like I said, probably six like the the last six seven months at Torquay was mm -hmm. for me personally in a in a professional environment for Torquay. It was like hell on earth. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it it was a real tough struggle mentally. Yeah. I was just I was just shot to pieces. Yeah, um, yeah. Chris did offer me a deal, offered me a one year deal. Yeah, uh, I make it the most money I'd ever been on was as at Torquay. I was on was one of the top earners, and I was on twelve hundred a week, and he offered mm -hmm. me six hundred. Yeah, um, yeah. Which I'll was show where the club was going, wasn't it? Yeah, which was another year, and obviously he said to me that. Well, he, he says that, you know, he says to me that you know budgets are being his budgets being cut, but then you know he puts he puts players that come in after that on more than me. Yeah. Um, Bearing in mind, some of the some of the players did sign two year deals. Or yeah, one. that was our, that was what ruined our next season. We actually started yeah, yeah. all right, but as yeah, soon yeah. as you got back to those players who just didn't want to be there and weren't good enough, in our opinion, you yeah, know, you've yeah. stuck. And that, and that obviously being as much as I would have loved to stay because I would I would have loved to have have done ten years and, and done a testimonial mm. and I just didn't get the right vibe from it. And I yeah, think no. the, I think yeah. the fifty percent pay cut. Bearing in mind, they had two kids and a mortgage, yeah. uh, and an expensive yeah. wife. Where no, she won't, she won't be really saying that, but yeah, I, I just couldn't afford to live on it. Yeah, I no. couldn't afford to live down in down where we were, and um, spoke to Daryl, and, and obviously the move kind of manifested in itself, and it was it was just one of those hand in hand in gloves, like you know when Harry mm. Potter gets his wand, then yeah. it just goes. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it it right outside. Side. Put me outside yeah. to see how well it worked out for you and all that. And yeah. Bristol Rovers were always going to go back, weren't they? Yeah. They're always going to go back to the level they were at. Uh, yeah. But no, that was great. You, what was your favourite talkie game in your long spell with us? Is there one that stands out? Is it the playoff final in 09 or? No, Pl Plymouth away. Plymouth oh, away. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, You've when, we, in, yeah. when yeah. we did the when we the did sliding the sliding finish in front of the fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when we did the, when we did the double, obviously we beat um at Playmore. Union scored the yeah. outrageous chip. Wow. I mean, yeah, we, we were playing. We were playing some great football. It was such. It was just a fun time to be to play your football in it. Like I said, I've never felt so the freedom you could tell in place. Yeah, yeah I've never. Yeah, I've never felt so free and be able to do what I had. I could do because I had people behind me I could rely on. 
Yeah. yeah. Unan doesn't right. try that in a different team. So he yeah. won't try that shit. You know, <laughs> that's, a, that's a same sample of what you're on about. Was, yeah. Yeah. And it was like, because you've got Demo as your anchor and you've got two brilliant centre halves. Yeah. You've got, obviously, you've got Mr. Dependable at left back and you've got an absolute ball up top in, in Rene where you could just bounce stuff into what him. It, just, it, was, yeah. it was like that team was just, I, I felt that team special. Was just yeah, was my favourite to watch out of all of them. They're mm. they're my favourite to watch actually. Yeah, but so it, was, it was just yeah, it was just everything I needed as a player. Yeah, I could yeah. go and be myself for probably the first time in four or five years. I should really have got twenty that year. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> if, if Rennie had passed me the ball instead, because it was it got to the stage at the end where I'd make runs and he wouldn't pass at me. He went, I've got to be top <laughs> scorer. He would actually yeah. generally say that to me. I've got to be top goal scorer, and I was like. Ren, you can be top goal scorer, but let's just get the goals and get the wins, mate. Yeah, it doesn't absolutely. bother me whatsoever. But it, yeah, it was just, um, it was just, a, just an amazing ethos yeah, great. to be yeah. involved in. But Plymouth away in front of that packed away end to go there and first incredible. time we won in the forty years, I think. It yeah, was. it was incredible. Yeah, yeah. Those, those two games so long, stick with yeah. me forever. They yeah, were just, you know, so ridiculous. And then to score, you know, it was just the, it was just the icing on the cake. Like it was just yeah. brilliant. Look at where the two clubs are now as well. It just shows how big that moment was. And very quickly, because we've used so much of your time and very appreciated. Let's right. talk a little about management and then what you're doing now, sort of the PFA and how all these experiences, probably the end of the Torquay one has probably helped you with your current role, but a bit of manage, going into management and then into PFA sort of role. How's that all been? It was definitely an eye-opener. I'll be yeah. honest with you. Managing at Gloucester was... I enjoyed it. Um I, quite, I, I saw you went up the table. Can you come in quite low? Yeah, and... we were four, we were four points off the playoffs when I got yeah. sacked, and uh, yeah, so that was you now that was a new one to me. We had um, six. We had a, we assembled a really good squad. We had a budget cut, which obviously happens in non-league. Mm. Um, you know, we had an indifferent start. We we played eleven. We won five. We lost five, and we drew one. But we had big players that were out injured, mm. and it, it was such an eye opener because the national league in itself, when you're a member of staff. There's so many different things mm. chucked that you, you just mm. could, you couldn't believe it. I had a chairman that would, I'd get a phone call every night at half nine with another grenade that he chucked during the day, which would blow up the next morning. So half of my job was to settle down the lads that he'd, he'd managed to piss off and get them in a focused way to, to train and play. Mm. So it was such a surreal, completely polar opposite to how I was coaching at Rovers where, Mm. Everything was structured, everything was yeah. done through S and C physiotherapy. You, you think about one that well, I was talking earlier about Wonderland. Yeah. It was it was like yeah. that. And then uh, you go into I won't say park football, you go into football where it's kind it's... of more amateur with amateur people running it. Mm. So, I mean, from the outside in, they've decided disastrous season, haven't they? It's all been cal- carnage there. A couple yeah, of years yeah. after your spell. Yeah. yeah. And, so it, it was eye opening and, and it was it led me into the role of, of what I do now. So I've been with the PFA for nearly two years. Uh, right, two yeah. years in December, which for the first time in, I mean, that might sound stupid and it might sound um, a bit daft, but, you know, being in this role has enabled me to become more, a better husband, a better dad, yeah, it's great, a better yeah. friend. Because you make so many sacrifices mm. throughout your career. Yeah. And that's another thing when supporters are sitting yeah, there no. and dreaming, yeah, and they're like, ah, and I'm like, you don't know what I've had to do to get here. I know you move your family. You move. This is what I yeah. don't understand, especially at this at any level, it's unacceptable. But especially at this level, where it's literally one bad season and your your football career is done. You yeah, are not a yeah, professional yeah, footballer anymore. You, you take and then there'll be people going, "Oh, shut up!" And you know, you, you're a professional footballer. But if I was to say to you, there's only one percent of the country yeah. that have ever been able to play a professional football game. Yeah, that and it's that in itself is a well, that's such an it's achievement. Just, yeah, it's just truly astonishing. Yeah, you know, that's it's such a small thing, and to go and have longevity and stuff is you know it's kind of unheard of now. Mm. Yeah, um, as I said, the amount of careers I've seen at Torquay, you think, oh, he's a promising, and then three years later, you're like, what happened to them? It's like they're nowhere near. They're nowhere yeah. near anymore. Yeah, and it's making sure you for 17 years you eat the right food, you yeah. do the right things, you say the right things, and you know now I'm. Turning forty two in September, I've got a hell of a beer belly because I've enjoyed retirement. <laughs> but it's the the PFA job has given me the stability to be able to do That's that amazing. to be a better to be a better person, and I can help players now in my role. So my role is part of the player services. So I deal with contract issues, disciplinaries, and yeah. do presentations within clubs. 
We do a lot of that stuff around health and well-being, That's transition. Have you worked with Alex Fletcher? Have with Alex Fletcher? Yeah, so, so yeah. I, helped, I helped Fletcher get the job. So Fletcher, obviously, yeah. with his, when he... I went primary school with him. He was great. Yeah. Lad. yeah. So when he suffered his brain injury yeah. um, at Bath, I was dealing... I was on the case with him. Right, okay, yeah. So we did a BBC Sport thing with him when he yeah. was trying to... We're, we're still trying to actively get pitch... I was about, pitch, so happy pitch you said pitch. that because it yeah. needs to happen. I mean, look at I always look at uh, Playmore. That's just a concrete wall. It's just amazing. Yeah. It's horrible that it's taken that long until yeah. something yeah. happens for them to go right. Well, this needs to be some sort of padding or safety, and that's amazing that you're actually working. Yeah, so we're, we're actively still trying to we're trying to put it through government at the minute. Yeah, um, which if we can get that, you know, it's happened to Alex, and then you know you you will see certain issues. Probably non-league, more so non the mm. EFL, because there's a there's a, a specific guideline you used to have. But like you said, playing more is another one. Yeah, you know, concrete walls, and that's what yeah. had to happen to Alex. The, yeah. the runoff where it was, you know, was quite significant. But because it was a wet day, he got nudged, mm. and his, you know, what yeah. happened was just just horrible. And he's done ever so well to come back from it. But Amazing, yeah. you know, to be able to yeah, support yeah. someone like that is so fulfilling. Yeah, and it's, it's it's little things. Personally, it's the first time I've had a holiday in 24 yeah. years in August. Yeah, like it's, it's stupid things like that. Yeah, know. no, I, and that's yeah. what people forget, people forget. Yeah, no, it's. Um, it's I think I think it's also it's also important to note as well, Lee, and you have to remember this for for for, for you know for for the legacies of football supporters. Mm. I met my now wife in two thousand and five, and we've been married fifteen years next next month. And every time she's opened our fridge. <laughs> uh, most of that time, look. We made just sure to the right of where the handle episodes. is in our fridge, look. He's been awesome. waiting. That year hours they did for the that. magnets. You're on there. Silsy's on there. Nico's on there. Every time she's opened the fridge, and we now have we've got three children who drink a lot of milk. So every time she opens the fridge, look what she sees. Look, you see. That she is said, make sure we sure you show him my magnet. Episode, that's within like Adam yeah. Partridge when he meets his super yeah. fan. He ran away. <laughs> Chris, that <laughs> yeah, is magnificent. So... That, is, that is brilliant. I've got to send you. I've got some talkies now, but you have to give me your address. I'll send some stuff down. Hey, can really, <laughs> really teaser. That is that is great. Um, yeah, no, it's 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 it's, it's brilliant actually. I imagine, yeah. It's great. That, I love hearing when like footballers kind of then help back in football, and because you hear some really sad stories, don't you? After, after football, especially when people just can't really settle back into that. But you know, it's great. Obviously, yourself, Nicholson, Hargreaves, yeah. all Lafro, all these sort of players. I think even Bevan's goalkeeper coach and all stuff like that, isn't it? So it's great yeah, that you're all still in the game. He's at Wolves, and it's good in the job that I do because obviously I look after the Southwest clubs, the AFL clubs, mm. um, and the Premier League. Like obviously, maybe got maybe potentially going up into Wolves being one of my clubs I look after. So. You know, to you kind of got your network already. Obviously, Nico, yeah. you know, we're still really close, and mm. he's at Exeter, so it's great when I go down to visit down there. You know, yeah. we catch up yeah. all the time. Bevs is at Wolves as well, so kind of know everyone, you know, in and around this region. So it's always great to catch up with with ex players yeah. and ex teammates. Yeah. Well. That's lovely stuff. Um, and yeah, we all saw it at that reunion as well a few years ago with the Legends of the Buckle era, and that was really nice watching all that. Yeah, I, I there was whispers of putting a game together at the minute but um yeah it's kind of died a death a little bit you'll have to do a talky talk one or whatever yeah no there was a bit yeah. I, th I think there was but obviously with the owners we had and then there wasn't much yeah. back. but i think hopefully um moving forward now we're in a much better place of our football club there could be something in the future i'm sure yeah yeah always, you know. yeah every Please. club Billions of uh, pound, shilling, and pence. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, really quickly, just before we end this, uh, just a couple of quick fire questions. I've just got three here for you. Um, firstly, May 17th, 2009, or May 17th, 2015, which is the better <laughs> feeling? <laughs> That's a tough that is one. A horrible question. That's a question you don't want the answer to on this, isn't it? <laughs> uh, what, I, what I would say to very different. Yeah. experiences but as a boyhood moment i would probably say 2015 because That's of fair enough. Yeah. because of what had transpired yeah. yeah um and you know that was first time of asking as well and there was a lot a lot of, i know we got on about talkies pressure yeah. of going back yeah. up dropping yeah. down and going back up but it was such a huge huge pressure cooker at right yeah. that year but the, the the 2009 one was just brilliant because yeah. Like I said, it, it, you were just with, although the Rovers squad was just brilliant and I was blessed to be, be involved in two squads. But, you know, that, that was kind of like the 2009 was your family. Yeah. Is that what yeah. so We all yeah. lived together and we achieved something, you know, remarkable given that, you know, we were two years into the into the Blue Square Premier. So to achieve that and, mm. 
you know, it w was brilliant in itself in the manner in which we did it. But, you know, I would have to pick 2015 just because of, uh, you know, I shanked the penalty. Yeah, that's fair <laughs> enough. Um, two, um, have you ever met Phil Olivier? Apparently he's a lookalike. <laughs> Who's put that question? Because I'll fill him in. <laughs> that's no, I'll tell you who has, though. I'll tell you who has. My wife's met him. And actually, she was in Manchester on a night out and he was in there. And she grabbed him and said, can I have a picture of you, please? Because you look like my husband. <laughs> there you true go, Rachel. Story, that yeah. was for you there, Rachel. Yep, that's the answer. Um, actually, I've got two more really quick. Um, there was a game on B BT Sports. I think it was. I think you were playing Gateshead for Bristol against uh, when you were in Bristol Rovers. And there was a bit of an altercation and you kissed the opponent player. And yeah. at Talky, you had a couple of moments where you were trying to put the goalkeeper off as well. Like, when did you start start all that? Uh, I've always been that way, to be perfectly honest with you. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, listen, I, I love playing the game and I, and I love the emotion it gives you. But also, you, you I also know that it is a game. Yeah. Uh, it's a game we've been playing since we were kids from three, four years of age. And you never kind of lose that cheekiness sort of thing I mean some of the stuff I used to say and, and do to referees was just you know but everyone got up yeah. everyone used to get up to it I mean you can't get away with it now because no. so many cameras are around and like I said you, you kind of lose those characters out of football yeah. but yeah I think um, the the addition of social media and um, yeah YouTube has been a bit of a pain in the no ass fun anymore <laughs> Yeah, no. Yeah, fun. well, that's what I mean. I, I got back after the Rovers when I was against Gateshead, and bless him, JJ O'Donnell, he retired after that game. Funny enough, I think it was my kiss. But um, <laughs> yeah, it was. I got back into the car, and the missus has absolutely pelted me down the phone. What the hell are you thinking? <laughs> it's like I didn't realise how big it would actually, would it actually yeah. balloon up to. I mean, at one day I was in Attitude magazine, which was you know I was sent a picture of me like. Um, something love in the, in the actual magazine and Twitter was just going 10 to the dozen and yeah it's like a million hits on YouTube or something ridiculous like and then <laughs> obviously the distraction one against uh, I think it might against Morecambe it's another one we were just chasing the game I was trying to do anything <laughs> I could to trust the winner and finally full English breakfast or full roast oh, English, English breakfast all day long yeah with you on that all one. day long I play uh yeah. Yeah, I play cricket on a Saturday as a kind of a stress reliever now. So that's uh, that's the pre match, pre match game, pre match meal now. Well, there Sorry, we are. Sam, I had to ask it. So yeah, no, it's it. a tradition. <laughs> no, um, thank you so much. Obviously, I was at, at the time without making you feel old. You know, you were like at the start of when I started supporting the football club, and you, Nicholson, Bevan, all those sort of players, seals. You know yeah. what I grew up watching. So it's been an absolute honour. Yeah, it's not quite yeah. Chris's. Yeah, that. Not That's quite Christmas time, level, it. obviously, but it's been an absolute <laughs> honour to have you on. Um, what, an, what, yeah, what a guest! And I wish you best of luck with um, fantastic with mm -hmm. PFA, and thank you so much for all your years at the football club. No, uh, brilliant! Thank you ever so much for having me on. I really enjoyed it. Here's Hargreaves, the chance for Torquay. Chris Hargreaves, the captain. He stays on side. Carlisle checks instead. He's looking for Bennett. Sells. I was kind of, I was technically on time. Right, if you look at the time, it said nine. <laughs> and it, said, it said seven. What I do, well, I get nervous. We can split it, at least we can split it into two episodes maybe now. Yeah, I can. I get nervous and I'm like, yeah. right, I need to oh, I better go to it in this case. But, you know, it's, it's <laughs> I don't do this normally.